In case you're new, I'm Joshua Delisle, the designer maker. I like to design and make things on the cheap, but every now and again people swing at an expensive tool my way. So I'll take it upon myself to see if it's actually worth getting or not. So if you haven't been heavily spammed by Skynet recently, oh, I mean the algorithm, this is the Xtool D1, if you haven't seen the multitude of adverts recently. So these guys think that they're the best, and they think it's worth the 1,600 quid that you're gonna pay for it. So how about I give you my two pence on the matter? and see if we can make something fun with it at the same time. This is the D1 40 watt module and is currently the most powerful of its type on the market. It's a 455 nanometer wavelength. One cool feature is this laser crosshair. It has a little height adjustment arm here and it has a singular locking nut on the side here. Once at the right height, we can flick that little arm back up. It has an SD card slot on the back with a one button operation. The gantry is very minimalistic and simply made. It runs on these little linear rails here. Mine didn't come with air assist, but I've plugged mine into my compressor. Just make sure you're putting clean, dry air to yours. So the D1 has an ESP32 microcontroller. Any machine with the ESP32 has a built-in Wi-Fi function, hence why you've got this little aerial, but we're never gonna use that. For a laser, it's best to have a fixed wired cable connection. So essentially, you're buying a very sleek, very fancy, modern, minimalistic machine. You can get fancy toolboxes and a fancy glasses case, even though the glasses aren't so fancy. Everything is, as you should expect, very high quality. So let's see what this can do compared to the other lasers that I have, and if it can do anything more interesting. The first thing I have to figure out is this laser crosshair. As you can see, it's nowhere near where the laser is. So if you're into lasers, then you should be using Lightburn. I used the gerbil version for a long time, which is free, but it really has nothing on this. Anyway, we're gonna click on edit here and drop down to device settings. And you wanna look at laser offset. And so I measured the distance between the crosshair and my laser dot, which gave me minus 21 on the Y axis and plus 1.5 millimeters on the X axis. That now means that wherever I put that crosshair, let's say I try and get it in the middle of that circle, it'll automatically jump to where it needs to go. There you are. So this is a board that I've been using to test all kinds of lasers. This is the one that I've just done for Xtor, and as you can see, we're getting 100% penetration on nine millimeter hardwood ply at 500 millimeters per minute. Let me show you what that looks like. That is without a doubt the fastest one pass cut on this board so far. But let me show you a much cleaner way to cut things. Now these are both excellent cuts. I did this one with seven passes at 2000 millimeters per minute and this one one pass at 500 millimeters per minute. You get a much cleaner cut with multiple passes at a faster speed. Now I like to use free material, so let's try some pallet wood. As you can see, this has got a bit of a heavy grain to it and it's 14.63 millimeters. I'm gonna see how many passes at 2000 millimeters per minute to cut this piece in half. That was 22 passes, which equates to 58 seconds to cut this board in half. All right, let's try cutting and engraving something fairly useful. All right. So for some reason we missed this bottom edge, with a tiny bit of sanding, that is a saleable product, I think. So that was a total of seven minutes and 25 seconds. Let's say your hourly rate is 45 pounds per hour. So that's 75 pence times 7.25. That means the value of our engraving is five pounds 43 pence. Let's say we cut these out with the CNC router, which is obviously more quicker, and we just did the engraving. That would be four minutes, 17 seconds, giving you an engraved value of three pounds and 12 pence. So that hourly rate includes a 30% profit margin. The profit is what you use to buy tools and reinvest with. So if this machine is 1,650 pounds, it'll need to do 123 hours of work to pay for itself, which is the equivalent of engraving that letter 1,759 times. 
So obviously everyone's wages and overheads are different. You know, you've got rent, you've got insurance, you've got vehicles to say the least, and depending on where you live makes a massive difference as well. But personally, I think a 30% profit margin is respectable. There are plenty of businesses that you're buying from that are earning way above that. But you'll have to let me know your thoughts in the comment section. But what's really good is once we've got that hourly rate down, we can preview what we're making on Lightburn. And so by modifying the design, we can create things that are more affordable for people to buy. Because something's only worth what someone's prepared to pay for. And if you include postage, internet fees, packaging, etc., well this is working out to be about 15 quid. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't pay that. So the cheapest laser that we've reviewed so far is the Congro Z1. That's roughly 300 quid at the moment. Now that wouldn't cut anything like this, but on this board it cut it 100 millimeters per minute. That makes the X-Tool five times faster. The X-Tool is five and a half times more expensive, but if I think about it, that's actually way more cost effective than the CO2 laser that I have. I've just realized something and it's blown my mind a little bit. This is my GWIC 50 watt CO2 laser. And this also cuts 500 millimeters per minute on this board, except this is three grand, whilst the X-Tool is nearly half the price. So when I reviewed this machine, I took an average of what all the lasers are doing, and it worked out to be 10 millimeters per minute per watt of power, whilst the X-Tool is 10 watts less than the GWIC. So it's completely blown this out the water, and half the price. All right, I think I'm gonna keep that, and I'm gonna raffle this off. Someone can win this for five pound a ticket. So the only difference that I can think that makes this worth keeping is that this moves at 36,000 millimeters per minute, whilst the D1 does 24,000 millimeters per minute. I'll also need to build or get hold of a box for it, which I think the x -Tool does. Right, I've got an idea for something I've not seen anyone else do yet. Let me show you. So the 455 nanometer wavelength is excellent on stainless steel. We will have a look at that shortly. This here is a blade I made in a previous episode. It's an iron clad style, so the, the outside of this is just normal marred steel. And as you can see, I tried to engrave it with my 20 watt laser, which kind of just did a negative on the patina that I put on this. However, looking at the lines on my table, this thing's actually really digging into the steel. So I'm gonna redo that etching there and see what the results are. I do not do this, but I've had to take the shroud off. We're going to try this now at a thousand millimeters per minute and see how it turns out. Glasses are on. Right, it looks good, but does that black come off? No, it doesn't. Look at that. That is a black etching though on mild steel. Stainless, easy, most lasers can do stainless, but not I've not seen one do it on mild before. That was the best go at a 20 watt laser. 40 watt is where it's at. All right, so that is impressive, but bear with me, because I have some bronze powder and some copper powder. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? All right, I'm gonna try a tiny bit of copper powder to start with. Ooh, that's a bit too much. Depending on how this goes, I might add a flux. Oh, is that gonna blow it all away? Probably is, isn't it? Flux might be helpful just to stop it going anywhere. Anyway, let's have a go. It's just gone black. Let's try another one. This one's a lot faster this time. Ooh, that's doing something. So that... It's definitely working. I'm gonna try another one at a slower speed, just here. Bit of borax. All right, moment of truth. Now oh, that didn't work so well that time. So I've got little balls of copper there, but on this one, it's kind of like finer. So maybe going faster is better. No, that's not worked near as well. I've got some plumbing flux. Let's see if that works any better. I dab a little bit there. Brunkler powder on top. Right, so I've had to put an emergency stop on that experiment. Turns out you absolutely mustn't run this without air assist. Fortunately, these little lens protectors are replaceable. You can see in the center there, it's gotten quite bad. You know, I was like, what's going on? So I did a test and it came out like that. And I thought, that's not good. So I replaced this and 
It's doing a lot better now. So I'd love your thoughts on this experiment and maybe ways that I can improve it further. Any good suggestions, I'll share that knowledge around. But I'm not done yet. I've got another thing to show you. All right, this is another piece of pallet wood that I've just sanded, except I'm gonna char just the end of it here. Now I'm gonna rub it down a little. There we are, beautiful. Now what I'm gonna do is cut a letter out of it here and inlay it into a little coaster I'm gonna cut out here. Let me show you what makes that possible. So on Lightburn, I've created the coaster here and the inlay here. And you'll notice that I've got them in different colors. So that's because I've got them on two separate layers. So I've got the layers here. And if I double click the coaster. All right, so now on this menu here, we have Kerf Offset. That's basically the thickness of the laser beam. Mine is set to minus 0.19. And my inlay is set to plus 0.19. So I'm gonna cut out the inlay first. Oh, that turned out it didn't need anywhere near as many passes. That's come out really nice though, look at that. Right, and now we'll do the coaster. So it turns out it needed less than 15 passes. All right, so I've given it a quick sand. As you can see, the reverse is a bit more grotty. If I have a honeycomb, that would be a lot uh, cleaner. I actually do have a honeycomb for this, but I don't have the standoff, so it doesn't fit. Let's lay it on here, put it upside down for now. And let's see how well these inlays fit. Ah, oh, too well, the answer is. I think I might have gotten the tolerances the wrong way around. Never mind. let's cut those parts out again. Right, I've recut them. I thought I had my tolerances set, but I think the extra passes took a, a bit more off than I wanted to. So let's insert this round the back side. That's a better fit. Hey, look at that. And you know what? I think we can have these uh, protruding a bit. <laughs> even better, look at that. Or even if it's sunken in, it might be even better. Well, that has given us some options, that has. How does it look with a bevel though? Well, that's even better, that is. So that's cool and everything, but not nearly as interesting enough for me. Let me show you something that is. I asked AI if it could help me design some Celtic knots. I'm not sponsored, but I've put a link to their website in the description. I love all of these. Uh, which one shall I choose, though? I think I'm going to choose this one for simplicity's sake. So now I've imported that JPEG to uh, Lightburn. I'm just going to right click and go on to Trace Image. This is now giving me a cut path. So I'm going to click OK. So if I move that now... There it is, there's the cutout image. So I can get rid of that. I'm gonna change the width and height. Mm, 300 millimeters. 23 minutes and 11 seconds, it tells me. Let's do it then. So I thought I had a light colored board that was big enough. Turns out I don't. So instead I've reduced the size to 250 millimeters or nearly 10 inches. Let's see how it turns out. Oh, I don't know what that was. Do you know what I think that is? I think that's the fire alarm. But that's because it's a sunny day outside. I'm going to close the door and redo it. Well, what a shame. Right, attempt number two. Right, let's see if that pops out then. Ooh. Hey, look at that. Ooh, that is awesome. So I want to inlay that with something much darker. I think this will do nicely. And FYI, I found all of this in a scrap bin. And here we go. Oh, that's so satisfying. Okay, let's see how this all fits together then. I think I'm gonna attempt this from the rear. That way I can tap it in with the hammer, I think. Yeah, definitely a hammer job. Right, let's see the reveal. Oh, yes. That is absolutely flawless. So I've just taken it outside just so we can appreciate the level of precision on this thing. I am absolutely blown away. This deserves a good backing and then we'll make the grain pop out with a bit of oil.
All right, that one's like a day to cure now and I want to get this video out. So I'll probably post that fully finished on Instagram. In the meantime, do I have any criticism about this machine? So here's a design flaw that I found. This is the laser cable. When it homes, it comes this way. But because that cable's in the way, it kind of pushes it forward ever so slightly. Meaning that if you've stopped an engraving and you want to restart it somehow or pick up from where you left off, it can't home back to its original place. Meaning you have to start all over. Now I could probably fix this myself, but it's definitely something Xtool needs to look at. I'm personally not too keen that the motherboard is all exposed. You know, you're going to get a lot of dust and stuff go in there in a workshop. Personally, I think if it just had a bit of a cover that would be more helpful. I appreciate the singular locking nut but let's say that's up there. It's so hard to get to. There we go, finally got it. There we go, got it locked down but it's just not a convenient place. I know I can unscrew that and take it off but that aerial is dead in the way. If you were someone who wants to use an app or something like that, that aerial will prevent you from having boards to slide up against this foot here. And I'm upset also that I can't use my tablet as an offline controller. That is using the gerbil app that I use with all my other machines. But if you ask me, would I pay the 1650 quid for this? Honestly, after comparing it to my CO2 laser, I probably would. It cuts fantastic and it is good quality. Also compared to the CO2, it's incredibly compact and still has a decent cutting area. I hope Xtor has an expansion pack so we can make these bigger. If so, I would definitely buy that. But listen, if you value any of the information that I've put in this video, then please like, subscribe and leave me a comment on what you think. It massively helps this channel and enables me to make more content like this. But what I'd like to say to you now is to stop watching YouTube. Get out there in the real world and to forge for yourself a life that's worth living. But if not, then may I recommend these videos? Right, I've got more lasers to show you, so do stick around. See you later. Bye-bye.